Okay, we're now obviously going to look at the driver's cab on the Tiger One. Um, the first thing that's very noticeable, certainly for me when you get in there, is the fact that the hatch is offset, um, which is quite unusual. And also, um, it actually looks quite comfy. Directly in front is also a steering wheel, again, quite unusual for any tank design to have a steering wheel there. Um, and what Ian's going to do now is quickly take us around and point out some of the major controls that you find in the driver's cab. Basic controls on in the driver's compartment are, as you can see, we've got a steering wheel. That's a hydraulic, you know, power assisted steering. And also, a secondary form of steering is like the old traditional way is the tiller sticks located by my right knee and my left knee. Driving the Tiger, uh, it's quite hard to actually see out within the vision slot up here. You cannot see any of the track guards or the front of the tank, so I'm solely relying on people guiding me. But once we're in the arena, if we have a display, it's not too bad, but in close quarters it can be a bit tricky, so that's why we always have people on the ground so I can visually see and in radio contact. You've got to keep one eye what's going on within the vision block outside, and the other eye, you've got to keep an eye on the temperature, oil pressure, and the revs. Most important thing is the oil pressure. We've got an oil pressure gauge in here. As soon as the tank starts, it should be more or less off the scale, so we've got a good pressure. Another important factor is coolant. Other controls are, to my right, your choke lever. Majority of the time, we do give it a bit of choke, and also, when you go to start the tank, within, I'll show you later on, in the fire compartment, there is a primer unit for fuel. And also, in the driver's mode, you've got the pedals down here, very close together, almost like a Formula One sort of car. It's so tight. If you've got big boots on, it's quite awkward to drive. Um, you've got the accelerator pedal, brake, clutch, just like on a car. And also, running right in front of you, you've got the output shafts, the drive shafts on the gearbox through the steering uh, assembly, uh, brake assembly, out to the final drives. On my left, uh, we've got the handbrake. I'll just pull on. So you've got the main handbrake, so that's there. Also, on the Tiger, uh, when selecting gear, what we have is a uh, transfer lever, which is situated here by my right knee, um, which indicates uh, neutral, reverse or forward. Uh, also, above that is an engagement knob. You depress the knob in on the transfer box, and then you can engage forward or reverse. Also, here is the gear ratios. On a Tiger, you can pull away from one to four, anything in between those uh, gear ratios, but depending on the terrain, Normally, the, but the Tiger has eight forward gears and four reverse. Also, in the uh, driver's compartment, as opposed to the other side where the uh, machine gunner sits and the radio operator, you have these uh, filler necks. These are for the final drives that I was showing you from the uh, outside during the first parade. This is where you fill them up through these. Um, they're just vented. They've got a little bit like a vent tube on the top, but um, that's where they're filled up from. So, you know, they obviously thought of everything, you know, to do that, make it so much easier to work on this tank. Where we are now, we're in the fighting compartment. Underneath our feet is the uh, turret floor, and housed underneath there is the batteries. Uh, normally, on the original in Tiger, there would have been about four batteries, but um, this one's been we've been modified this one just to run on the two batteries. So they would be under the turret floor. They would be reconnected and checked, obviously, to make sure they got enough charge to start the Tiger. The secondary bit for the um, starting sequence is here. We have a primer, a fuel primer, uh, which can fill the carburetors up with fuel so what it takes is about six to eight pumps um, on the primer and then it gives it enough fuel within the carbs to start the engine so there's the primer down on to the right here is the fuel valves for the fuel tank there's one on the right here and there's also another one on the left over there but we do not use those two tanks it's just solely the ones on the right hand side so they would be switched to position three which is a main uh, fuel tank um, position two is reserve, and position one is fully off. So the fuel valves, are always we always keep them off all the time until we use the vehicle. So that will be turned on number three to start the tank, and also the main uh, switch of it all is the master switch, the main power. So once that's initiated and turned on, then it's down over to the driver to start the tank. If there's any problems or there's anything that's going to happen or there's a suspect uh, fuel leak or fire. 
you turn the master switch off straight away and kill the fuel. That's why when we first prayed it and start the tank, you've always got two or three people with you to help you out, fire watch and for safety reasons. So, right, if we take it from the master switches on and the fuel was turned on, the next point of call is for me to start the uh, tank itself. So the first thing I'll do, obviously, to check, make sure the steering is centralised and I depress the clutch with my foot, making sure the tank does not move at all. Handbrake is applied as well. On the side of the gearbox here is a little black knob. And that engage, when you push that, that can engage the forward or reverse uh, motion of the tank for the transfer lever. What I do is I make sure the transfer lever is in neutral. And then what I do is we've got a, the ignition panel here, hence the uh, ignition key. And then I click twice, one, two, and then the ignition should come on and it should be ready for the start. Also, there is a choke lever down to my right hand side. I would give the, the tank a little bit of choke. The guy in the back as well, they would prime the engine with a few uh, pumps on the fuel primer so the engine's got plenty of fuel in it ready to fire up. And then you press the ignition switch and then the tank will fire up and usually I take it to about 1000 uh, RPM. If I let the tank idle too much, it, it's sort of like clogs itself up, it starts to choke, so it's nice to start out and give it a good phase and revs and then it clears it out and it warms the tank up a lot quicker and then eventually I'll, I'll take the choke off and then she hopefully she'll start warming up nicely then. Just to get all the uh, oils up to temperature because it's important on the gearbox on the transmission side that the oils are up to temperature. If they're not up to temperature then it makes the uh, gear selection uh, very hard. So basically that's it. 